All right, I thought I would uh, make a water water slide tube. So we'll start with a cylinder, and we don't need that many sides to it. Get rid of the face ends. Now we will turn it on its side. Well, or we could, it doesn't have to be turned on its side. It doesn't matter. We're just going to look at a side view so that we can we turn on x-ray here. We can select, and it'll select everything without x-ray on. You know, you only select what's basically facing the camera and not behind it too. Not what's behind, but if you turn it on and you select, it'll get what's in the backside too. So we'll extrude this That's is probably good. Now what we'll do is put loop cuts in it. This is where the flexibility like that of a straw, how this works. The more uh, ribs that are in there the better the flexibility but too much and you have one high polygon mesh you're trying to put in the game so you uh, you don't want to go crazy with this the so game can handle a pretty good bit I think I got 900,000 in with one mesh back when I didn't know anything about importing in stuff and I didn't know how to subdivide things I didn't know how to decimate things uh, well I knew how to subdivide I didn't know how to decimate how to reduce poly count so everything had a hell of a lot of polygons I made in the beginning <clears throat> so we got this thing cut now uh, we got to just bend it around so what I'll turn on this uh, proportional editing and I'll pick like a perfect side view or front view whatever it don't matter I'll pick these faces here and as I start moving you'll see page up page down adjust proportionate editing but you can all want to make the thing so that part of it's flat so you you're still limited to the amount of bin you can put in it you don't want to distort the thing too much. Uh, you could also go into sculpt mode if you preferred to try to do something in here where you are more or less um, bending. And I mean, I think this probably is better, honestly, than trying to move them the other way. But we want to keep it straight at some axis because we're going to be weaving in a um, spline river inside of it. So we'll go with that just to try it and see. So back to object mode. <clears throat> uh, these two things here, you can turn this, these two balls are, you click on this to show face orientation. turn x-ray off 
So right now inside the thing is red and outside it's blue. <coughs> to get this to work right, you got... <coughs> <coughs> Damn. So what we have to do now is in edit mode, hit A to select all, mesh, normals, flip, then back to object mode. Now you won't be able to touch the outside of this or it'll eat the car, but on the inside the normals will be like they're supposed to be. So we'll shade this smooth. Uh, we'll import in like a car uh, from the game so we can kind of get an idea of the scale. All right. So we need to know how much scale this. Maybe that'll do. So we'll get rid of the car. Well, the car, the light, the camera. Now, how do we want this to spawn in the world? Well, I guess it depends on where the start will be. But I guess I'll do it like that. I'll set the origin to the 3D cursor. Palau transforms. I'll give it a name. Well, I guess I could just uh, leave that for a second. I need to give it a texture, though. Two, one. Don't worry about the colors. It ain't going to make a difference what you put that on. Just as long as it's got a texture. Now let's duplicate it. Move it over. Just like yesterday. four I right, go in here and give each one a different texture real quick just a different name. Now it don't matter what they're all called now. I'm about to combine them all anyway. I don't know what I'm thinking.
So these are the four textures we need to make. Uh, we need collision mesh. I'm going to do it this way this time. I'll just duplicate this. Call this the collision mesh. Add two empty plane axes. Call one base zero zero and the other start zero one. Hold shift, left click, drag, drop. Put start in base and do the same thing with these two. Put them in start. So this is what we end up with. Export it to, uh, we'll just go to export DAE. Let's see what level am I going to put this in. Uh, maybe, I guess the same one the other one's in. I think I put that in, in industrial. In the art folder, I can just add it to the other slides folder. So that they're both together, I guess. I'll call this tube slide. So now I need to go to that folder. add the texture to the other texture so we got slide one two three four five whatever in here uh, for the other texture we'll just copy this one to the clipboard we'll go down here at the very last one you'll know there's two brackets you're just gonna put a bracket thing like that with a comma and then paste If you want to save yourself a little time, copy that bracket, copy that, and then paste it two more times. So we need four of these in total. So this is tube one. Copy, paste, paste. Next one's two, three, and four. Save. Now let's load our level. And like yesterday, these tubes will all be white when the level loads. And we'll just edit each one given its own unique color in the game. And yes, you could put a texture map on it too if you preferred put a texture map. But you'd have to also take the time to get the UVs where you want them. So this is the one from yesterday. So let's get the new one out.
Well, actually, all these are red for some crazy reason. Hell, who knows? I thought they'd be white. All right, so each one's got its own texture. Just go to each one and just change the color to whatever color you want it to be. And these are already set to glow. So, but yesterday I had to go in and actually turn on glow. Uh, I guess people would prefer it to be more vibrant. Which, yeah, I think the more vibrant looks better too. Make this one yellow. So we save, then we, I guess I saved them all. Yeah, I can't remember if I clicked on save or not. So now to just get some water in there. I don't like these white things that they've stuck on these rivers. That's about as useless as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. That's how I feel about them. Shit's twisted up now. I can't grab my node. It's pissing me off now. Come on. And I damn sure can't see the arrows to grab them. I wish they would fix that shit too. Damn it, man. Just make it so we can grab the damn arrow by just picking a hotkey. It's not that hard to do. I think people just sometimes maybe just like doing extra work. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm what one would call an energy conservationist. <laughs> I save energy for when I need it. I don't like uh, other people call that lazy. I know I got a damn node in there and I can't damn get it. Yeah, that's, that's to me, this grabbing shit is what takes the longest. Of anything else with the editor, this would be my biggest gripe. If you're going to make a world editor where you're making things, then you would think that the 
most basic core part of making something, it, manipulating and moving it, would be a high priority to make easier. So it's like insanity, man, thinking, why the hell would you want to do more work than you need to? It's like putting your skill points in a character. If you're going to benefit a lot more if you put them points into something that gives you a bonus from the beginning, uh, you know, than something later on. So this would be one of these things you should want to prioritize the manipulation and moving of things early on to get the most done. Well, it's a small team they got. Well, more all the more reason to make make it faster. <laughs> That's just how I look at it. Need a talk show. People call in called the Beam NG Talk Show where people call in and rant rant about things. <laughs> Used to have a radio station here in Atlanta that they did that. People called in and they complained about uh, whatever their job was. They just had a, a rant that nobody cared about, you know, probably but then. But it's funny to hear everybody's personal opinions on things, what they hated about their job, why they hated it. So let's pick all these nodes. Let's make them wider. About maybe, let's see if that's 10, then maybe 15. All right, maybe 18. The depth, well, the depth uh, shouldn't really matter too much. This is as long as part of the water is in the tube. And part of it's not. You don't want to be completely underwater when you're in one of these things, or you'd have to hold your breath. Should be more fun, I think. They had one of these in the water part where I used to go, one of these tube type things. Remember, it scratched my back off every time I went into the damn thing. Just the way they had it joined at all the seams. Well, let's give it a test run. Let's turn up the magnitude physics to about 10. Uh, save our level. <clears throat> Let's get our car up here and stick it in the tube. Oh, yeah, and rebuild your collisions. All right, car, where are you at? Alright, y'all get ready. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put one in each side. And unpause them all at the same time. Should I put it in slow motion? Or just real speed from the start? Now we can't see anything. The only way we're gonna see anything is if we go to each material and we uh, put it make it an alpha channel. So, yeah, let me do that real quick so we can see inside. <clears throat> we pick the object, go to each material, go down to advanced, turn on alpha blend. And the amount of um, alpha 
255 is all. Anything less is, uh, don't see it. So I would just say pick a number between all of them that you want to make like 150 and go to each one and change it to alpha blend lerp alpha 150 that's gonna have some funny ass looking vertices in it too that's another thing I don't like about the way this does uh, alpha effects with transparencies with things I don't like the way it does that I don't think this engine is the best for alphas to be honest I think it's awesome for the damn physics though but some of the visuals and it's, it's lacklusting and lackluster in the alpha department like why that can't just show me a damn you know perfect inside looking out on the outside like it is from looking in oh, hell if I know double-sided well that'll make a difference won't it I figure some of this out as I go. I've only been fooling with this thing for about a year, so I don't know everything. Kind of figuring a little bit of it each day as I go along. All right, ready? Slow motion. Just two times faster than normal. <laughs> wow. That's something, <laughs> that's not what I expected to see. It's clear to me that this is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's going the wrong way. <laughs> so we'll go to the flow magnitude physics and uh, change this to uh, negative negative 10 yep that'll take care of that woo wee look at them go I believe we got us ourselves a water slide I believe we do Real time. Yeah, it's just too cool. Too cool. So what would it look like from inside the car? I think the engine stalled. I think it got water in it. What do you think? Um, what else was I thinking? Oh, the magnitude physics. Let's take, bump that up a lot to, to, I don't know, um, about minus 50. That's a good round number. Boy, I'll be doggone. 
looked like <laughs> I don't know, maybe it looked like a damn rat going down a um like a like a toilet's drain pipe or something, I don't know. Now one thing I didn't fool with is uh I didn't mess with the uh custom ground models. So like this is all just using like an asphalt because it's the base you know all meshes use asphalt basically is what it seems so if you want a mesh to act like something else you got to give it a different ground model which isn't hard to do you just pick the mesh you go into the material editor and you go like like see this is tube one i could tell this one to be um Ice. Could tell two two to be uh, I don't know sand. Number three to be metal or no, how about snow? You get the idea. You can make them all different things and we'll make this one uh We'll make this one dirt dusty, loose. Save all dirty materials, which just saved all four we just worked on. Rebuild collisions and reset. Well, all four different results. I didn't mean to get out of the car. Hey, you know what? That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? To be on foot guy and be up there. Let's put the on foot guy in the uh, tube. Oh, that's too cool. That's too cool there. Damn, that was pretty exciting, actually. Alright, I hope everyone enjoyed this uh, little video. <laughs> A little buddy there. Look at him go. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love that.